So, as some of you know, I'm in my final year of medical school here, and that's a really tenuous, tenuous time. Um, your brain basically realizes that it's just going to be assaulted for the next five years in residency, and this is the last, uh, you know, uh, time of freedom that you have, and it just starts to check out on you without any more. The other day I'm in clinic, and this 12-year-old boy comes in just for a physical. And 12 years old, that's about the time where you got some hormones going on, a little voice changing, a little <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, he might be the age where he starts to have an, an interest in a, you know, the sexual nature. And, and that's important for us because that's a good time to start talking about safe sex practices, keep them safe, keep them happy, that kind of thing. So this is a really bad time <laughs> for a mental lapse. But I want to ask him. You know, it's two, the year's 2013. Maybe he likes boys, maybe he likes girls. You can't just assume anymore. So I ask him, uh, you know, got my stethoscope on, white coat on, just finished doing an exam. So, you know, we ask this of all patients, but um, so do you like boys? <laughs> he looked at me, he's like, what the F? Like, <laughs> No, I was like, oh, do you like girls? He's like, yeah, I like girls, man. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 10 o'clock, this is going to be a long day. <laughs> so anyways, I have a, a younger brother. He's 13. His, his name is Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey Miniman. And he's also of he's that age. You know, and where he's going to start pretty soon realizing he might like boys or girls. And having... You know, I've had a, the privilege of having a few gay friends recently, and they, you know, told me their stories of coming out. And it was just, some of them, there, there's so much fear about what your family's going to think, what your friends will do, will they reject you, and there's so much angst, self-hate. I just wanted to avoid all that altogether with Jeffrey. So I thought about this beforehand. Way back when he was seven, I launched a preemptive strike. <laughs> I took him aside, I said, Jeffrey, come here. Quit playing their truck. Come here. Come here. Your brother wants to give you some knowledge from the dome here, okay? <laughs> so I, said, I said, look, Jeffrey, one day you're going to realize you might like boys. <laughs> oh, you might like, like girls. But you know what? Either way, I'm your brother. I'm here. I love you. And I'll always love you. And he looked up at me and I asked him, now, do you want me to help you wash that lipstick off your face? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, what else? So uh, recently I wanted to uh, send my girlfriend some flowers. She lives in San Diego. And you know, girls like things being kept spontaneous. So every 2.3 weeks I send in person are so easy. I mean, you go to the grocery store, they put them right in front of you, you pick out flowers, you should not spend more than 10. And you'll find some that are great, milk, you get your milk, your Cheerios, your flowers, boom, you're done, you're on for the rest of your day. But like flowers long distance is a completely different ballgame. You pick a, you have to pick a site, you go online, and there's just, it's an overload of options. Uh, this starts with a bestsellers list, which is laughable because and you summon, uh, you log on, you think, well, I guess if everyone's paying $100 for a dozen of them, like, no, no. I know that's not your best seller. You're just trying to make more money off it. Uh, you, you know, you click on occasions, and the, you would not believe how many occasions there are for flowers. There's thank you flowers. There's business flowers. There's anniversary flowers. There's just because flowers. There's I'm sorry flowers. And of course, I probably picked the worst one to go with, which was the Growers Select. So for $29.95, you plus $14 of a delivery fee and a $5 convenience fee. It's very not convenient for me to pay that $5. <laughs> <laughs> well, Some grower puts together what he thinks is going to be going to be nice. And as someone who's pretty type A, controlling, I thought to myself, you know what, this isn't a bad uh, um, opportunity to just let things be. Let someone else take care of it. So I get the grower select. Three days later, she gets the flowers, 
sends me a text like, oh, thank you so much, you're so, so spontaneous. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then she sends me a picture of the flowers, and my jaw literally drops, because it's the ugliest bouquet that I've ever seen in my life. And I don't know anything about flowers. Uh, it, it, uh, let's see. It looked like a blind person went urban foraging and then wrapped it with his feet. I definitely saw some tree bark, might have seen some moss, and 10% part says I might have even seen a dead fish in there. So I don't know. It was so it was so appalling that it's kind of made me lose faith in the entire practice of giving flowers, which is essentially predicated on this, honey. I love you so much. I want you to show you something that shows that our love will continue to grow. So here's a plant that's going to die and slowly wither. Over the <laughs> I hope you like it. <laughs> Thank you.